beautiful. I am unique. I am a temple of the Holy Spirit. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am a person of character and integrity. I am born to make a difference. I have the whole armor of God to stand against the darkness of the devil. I'll praise God all the time. Amen. Love you. It's Ruth. I hope you guys have all been enjoying your summer so far and this week I'll be teaching your lesson. So today we'll be learning from 1 Samuel chapter 18 to 20 and we can call this lesson David and Jonathan. So we begin with David which if you guys remember think back to last week's lesson he was anointed to be king but at this time Saul was still the king. So David continued to serve him faithfully, playing the harp for Paul and winning many battles for the nation of Israel. Many people loved David, including Saul's son, Jonathan. The only one that did not like David was King Saul. In fact, he wanted David to be killed so much that he would throw spears at him and even sent him into battles just to die but God always protected him. And during this time, David had one amazing friend. Jonathan always tried his best to change his father, King Saul's mind, and protect David from death. Jonathan made a promise to his best friend to warn him if Saul was going after him. And in return, David promised to show the love of God to Jonathan and his family for generations and generations to come. The Bible calls important promises like these covenants. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 20 verses 12 to 15 to see their covenant. It says, Jonathan said to David, I promise this before the Lord, the God of Israel, at this time tomorrow, I will find out how my father feels. If he feels good toward you, I'll send word to you. I'll let you know. 
but my father may mean to hurt you. He's talking about King Saul. If so, I will let you know and send you away safely. May the Lord punish me terribly if I don't do this. And may the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. But show me the kindness of the Lord as long as I live. Do this so that I may not die. You must not stop showing kindness to my family. Don't do this even when the Lord has destroyed all your enemies on the earth. Well, I would say it's pretty clear to see that these best friends would be there for each other, no matter how hard their lives would get. I think this is a great lesson for us to take away, that being a good friend matters. Can you think of the time some of your good friends have helped you? I want to read another verse for you. It is from Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. It says, A friend loves you all the time and a brother is always there to help you. I think that this verse fits perfectly with the lesson that we're learning. David and Jonathan were close as brothers and never allowed their difficult situations to get in the way of their love for each other. They made a promise or a covenant with each other to keep each other safe and bless each other. And they never broke that covenant which is what good friends do for each other. Think about ways you can be a better friend to the people around you. Like maybe if you see someone who needs help cleaning up, you can happily join them, showing them the love of God. Or you could even be nice to your friends, even if you're having a bad day or you are upset. Now, I can also think of another great friend in, a, in the Bible who is still friends with us today. Can you guess who it is? Let's read John chapter 15 verses 12 and 13. It says, This is my command. Love each other as I have loved you. The greatest love a person can show is to die for his friends. Amen. And the person I was thinking of is Jesus because he is the greatest friend that I have as a Christian. He showed us how much he loved us by dying on the cross for our sins. Isn't that amazing? He is our greatest friend of all because he loved us enough to die for us, even if we've done so many bad things. We can all learn from how great of a friend Jesus is to us by showing God's love and helping others even if they hurt you. And with that, our lesson is complete. Let's close our eyes, okay? Close our eyes and bow your heads, and let's finish in prayer. Dear Father God, I want to thank you for this wonderful day you've given us, Lord. I also want to thank you for sending your one and only Son to die for our sins, and just showing us what it means to be a true friend. I pray that you help us care for and be more loyal to the friends you've given us, Lord and just help us to show them more love every single day. I pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, guys. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening, and I hope you won't forget to be an amazing friend to everyone you meet this week. All right, bye. Hi, everybody. This is me, Elijah, and I want to sing you a song to make you feel happy. This is a light of mine. I'm a little child. This is a light of mine. I'm a little child, this is a lot of mine. I'm a little child, little child, little child, little child. Everywhere I go, I'm a little child. Everywhere I go, I'm a little child. Everywhere I go, I'm a little child, little child, little child, little child. Jesus is alive, I'm a little child. Jesus is the light, I'm the light and shine. Jesus is the light, I'm the light and shine. Let him shine, let him shine, let him shine. Let him shine, let him shine, let him shine. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening. Hi, everybody. It's me, Blair. And I want to give thanks for all the Sunday school teachers for having the time to teach us online. And I, I want to praise God 
and I want to give make you happy by singing you this song. And then what I say, I'm taking you hollow, can I say? Is I marrying you hollow? And then what I say, I'm taking you hollow, can I say? Is I marrying you hollow? And the GA is in the and the GA, and the GA is in the and the GA. Thank you for having the opportunity to watch me. Goodbye. Seems to be no way He works in ways we 
Hi Sunday School, how are you all? I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope summer's been treating you okay. It's been a long time since we've seen each other in person, but also in, in video. It's been a while since I taught as well. But yeah, I hope you guys are getting ready to go back to school. I hope everything's been good so far. And yeah, with that being said, let's get ready for the lesson that we have today. Um, it will be from the book of Mark. And we will begin at chapter 8. So yeah, I'll give you guys a little couple minutes to get your Bibles. But yeah, let's go. Let's, after that, let's dive right in. It is Mark chapter 8, verse 1. Y'all ready? Okay. It reads like this. In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered, and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them hungry to their homes, they will faint on their way. And some of them have come from far away. And his disciples answered him, How can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And he asked them, How many loaves are, do you have? They said, Seven. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and having given thanks, he broke them and gave to his disciples set them to set before the people and they set them before the crowd and they had a few small fish so they have seven loaves of bread and they have a few small fish and this is all that they have right so he, jesus so far as it tells us he directed the crowd to sit down and the disciples are asking him, well how are we going to feed all these people when we only have seven loaves and a few fish so this is what happens after and having blessed them he said that these also should be set before them and they ate and they were satisfied, which means they were all full. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full, and there were seven pieces of seven baskets left of food as the leftover. And there were about and there were and there were about four thousand people. And he sent them away, and immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanusa. Okay, so this is obviously a great story that many of us know, right? To, re to reiterate what the story said, it was a town where Jesus was teaching people, right? And, it, and it's a desolate place, meaning it's like a far away place, far from the city, um, far from where people normally live in. And it says that as he was teaching, he called his disciples and told them, I have compassion on the crowd. These people haven't been eating, right? And afterwards, he breaks the bread. And he gives it to all those people and all those people ate till they were full and even had leftovers. I, like, I personally can't understand how that happens, right? But it, it happened regardless. And, and the main thing I want to focus from the story is not, is not the miracle itself, as great as it is. But I want to focus on a key word and that word is compassion. So Jesus, the motive behind him making, doing this miracle is compassion. So what is compassion? Compassion is you having regard and concern for someone's misfortune or someone's if someone is in a difficult situation, it means simply you being concerned and caring for that person and wanting to help that person, right? And compassion is a beautiful thing. For example, if I'm in class and there's a, there's a kid beside me who does not understand the material that we're learning, right? And, and I see him that he's really struggling, I can, I can help him by being compassionate. I can be compassionate and take time out of myself to make sure that, you know, the, the kid beside me who's not understanding these things can, can, be, can understand. And if I'm not able to help him, at least I'll direct him somewhere where he can get help, right? That's compassion. But, but if I, if I um, decided to help the kid just because I wanted to show off how smart I am, I'm not being compassionate. That's not compassion, right? I'm just trying to show off to the kid how smart I am. And that's the same thing that Jesus did, and that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants, he wants, just like how he had compassion on the crowd, he didn't do the miracle just to show off how, how much of a miracle worker he can be. He didn't do that. He didn't do it for that reason. He did it simply because he had compassion on the crowd. He cared for the people. He saw that if he doesn't feed the people, these people, these people are going to go, and they're probably going to faint on the way. And some of them came from far away just to hear Jesus speak. So Jesus, knowing this, what he did is he had compassion. He cared for the people. And he simply did the miracle out of concern and out of care for the people. Out of pity for the people. And that is compassion. So, 
What we should learn from this is to be compassionate towards any and everyone as much as we can. You don't only have to be compassionate towards people that you know or, or people that are your friends. You can be compassionate towards a person down the street, right? Who, who you see in need of help. Or a kid in your class who you may not even know their name, right? You're not even friends with them. But if you see them struggling or if you see them wanting help in any type of way, you can have a compassionate heart and be able to help that person, regardless if you know them or not. The people that Jesus fed, right? As many as they are, 4,000 of them, for th all of them didn't know Jesus personally. They didn't have a personal, even though they knew Jesus to be a great teacher and they knew Jesus for who he is and they were there to listen to him, all of them didn't know him like the disciples did, right? All of them didn't know them in a real personal, intimate way. But yet Jesus still never failed to be compassionate towards them. And that's the same thing for us. We don't have to know every single person that we want to be compassionate towards, right? We, can't, we cannot turn the other cheek towards another person. Or we cannot be, um, we cannot just dismiss another person's struggles just because we don't know them. We have to be compassionate towards everyone and loving towards everyone. And in the Bible, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, if you guys turn with me, it says, Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. And that is what I want you all to learn today, the importance of compassion. Now, what I want you to do is to think of some people in the Bible who were compassionate towards people around them and who can be an example for you and me. I'll give you two examples. One is Ruth, who was compassionate towards Naomi. And another one is the Good Samaritan, who was compassionate towards the man who was attacked by robbers. So just like that, I want you to think of more people who were compassionate and who can be an example for the both of us. And after you have found those people, try to learn how you can be compassionate just like them to the, all the people around you, regardless if you know them or not. And that would be the lesson for today, for you to be more loving and more compassionate towards any and And with all of this said, take care, I love you, and God bless you. Bye.
sera 